Thomas and Friends. Thomas the Tank Engine. Thomas and the Trucks. Thomas used to grumble in the shed at night. I'm tired of pushing coaches. I want to see the world. The others didn't take much notice, for Thomas was a little engine with a long tongue. But one night, Edward came to the shed. He was a kind little engine and felt sorry for Thomas. I've got some trucks to take home tomorrow, he told him. If you take them instead of me, I'll push coaches in the yard. Thank you, said Thomas. That will be nice. So they asked their drivers next morning, and when they said yes, Thomas ran happily to find the trucks. Now, trucks are silly and noisy. They talk a lot and don't attend to what they are doing. They don't listen to their engine. And when he stops, they bump into each other screaming, Oh, 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 whatever is happening. And I'm sorry to say they play tricks on an engine who is not used to them. Edward knew all about trucks. He warned Thomas to be careful, but Thomas was too excited to listen. The shunter fastened the coupling, and when the signal dropped, Thomas was ready. The guard blew his whistle. Peep, peep, answered Thomas and started off. But the trucks weren't ready. Oh, 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 they screamed as their couplings tightened. Wait, Thomas, wait, but Thomas wouldn't wait. Come on, come on, he puffed, and the trucks scrambled slowly out of the siding and on onto the main line. Thomas was happy. Come along, come along, he puffed. All right, don't fuss. All right, don't fuss, grumbled the trucks. They chattered through the stations and rumbled over. Thomas whistled, peep, peep, and they rushed through the tunnel in which Henry had been shut up. Then they came to the top of the hill where Gordon had stuck. Steady now, steady, warned the driver, and he shut off the off steam and began to put began to put on the brakes. We're stopping, we're stopping, called Thomas. No, 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 answered the trucks and bumped into each other. Go on, go on. And before his driver could stop them, they had pushed Thomas down the hill and were rattling and laughing behind him. Poor Thomas tried to stop tried hard to stop them from making him go too fast. Stop pushing, stop pushing, he hissed, but the trucks would not stop. Go on, go on, they giggled in their silly way. He was glad when they got to the bottom. Then he saw in front the place where they had to stop. Oh dear, what shall I do? They rattled through the station and luckily the line was clear. As they swerve into the goods yard. Oh, he are grown Thomas as his brakes held fast and he skidded along the rails. I must stop. And he shut his eyes tight. When he opened them, he saw he had stopped just in front of the buffers. And there watching him was the fact director. What are you doing here, Thomas? He asked sternly. I brought Edward's trucks. Thomas answered. Why did you come so fast? I didn't mean to. I was pushed, said Thomas sadly. Haven't you pulled trucks before? No. Then you've got, then you've a lot to learn about trucks, little Thomas. They are silly things and must be kept in their place. After pushing them about here for a few weeks, you are all, you know almost as much about them as Edward. Then you'll be a really useful engine. Thomas and the breakdown train. Every day, the fat director came to the station to catch his train, and he always said hello to Thomas. There were lots of trucks in the yard. Different ones came in every day, and Thomas had to push and pull them into the right places. He worked hard. He knew now that he wasn't so clever as he had thought. Besides... The fat director had been kind to him and he wanted to learn all about trucks so as to be a really useful engine. But on a siding by themselves were some trucks and Thomas, that Thomas was told he mustn't touch. There was a small coach, some flat trucks and two quite things his driver called cranes. That's the breakdown train, he said. When there's an accident, the workmen 
get into the coach and the engine takes them quickly to help the hurt people to clear and to clear and mend the line. The cranes are for lifting heavy things like engines and coaches and trucks. One day, Thomas was in the yard when he heard an engine whistling, help, help, and a goods train came rushing through much too fast. The engine, a new one called James, and he was frightened. His brake locks were on fire and smoke and sparks steamed out on each side. They're pushing me, they're pushing me, he panted. On, 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 laughed the trucks and still whistling, help, help. Poor James disappeared under a bridge. I like to teach those trucks a lesson, said Thomas the tank engine. Presently, a bell rang in the signal box and the met. And a man came running. James is off the line. The breakdown train quickly, he shouted. So Thomas was coupled on. The workmen jumped into their coach and off they went. Thomas worked his hardest. Hurry, 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 he puffed. And this time he wasn't pretending to be like Gordon. He really meant it. Bother those trucks and their tricks, he thought. I hope poor James isn't hurt. They found James and the trucks at a bend in the line. The brake van... And the last few trucks were on the rails, but in, but the front ones were piled in a heap. James was in a field with a cow looking at him, and his driver and fireman were feeling him all over to see if he was hurt. Never mind, James, they said. It wasn't your fault. It was those wooden brakes they gave you. We always said they were no good. Thomas pushed the breakdown train alongside. Then he pulled the unheard trucks out of the way. Oh dear, oh dear, they groaned. Serves you right, serves you right, puffed Thomas crossly. When the man put the other trucks on the line, he pulled them away to, he was, it, he was hard at work puffing backwards and forwards all afternoon. This will teach you a lesson, this will teach you a lesson, he told the trucks. And they answered, yes it will, yes it will, in a sad, groaning, creaky sort of voice. They left the broken trucks and mended the line. Then with two cranes, they put a James back on the rails. He tried to move, but he couldn't. So Thomas helped him back to the shed. The fact director was waiting anxiously for them. Well done, Thomas, he said kindly. I've heard all about it and I'm very pleased with you. You're a really useful engine. James shall have some proper brakes and a new coat of paint. And you shall have a branch line all to yourself. Yes, oh, sir, said Thomas happily. Now Thomas is happy as can be. He, he has a branch line all to himself and puffs proudly backwards and forwards with his two coaches all day. He is never lonely, but there is always some engines to talk at the junction. Edward and Henry stop quite often and tell him, about, tell him the news. Gordon is always in a hurry and does not stop. But he always forgets to say poop poop to little Thomas. And Thomas always whistles peep peep in return. The end.